my god. Wow. This is big. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we have something extremely special. This is a 50 pound bluefin tuna. It was caught less than 24 hours ago, so it's extremely fresh. And today, we're gonna dry age it. It all started with a six hour drive to Cape Cod. These fish are caught off the East Coast. And as you can tell, I could barely contain my excitement. Look at that freaking fish. Putting the tuna in a bag, then we're gonna throw it on ice. All right, we are sweating. Just picked up the tuna. As you can see, real wheel fishing charters by Elena. We are very excited. We got our tuna. Time to go throw it in the dry age. Another six hour drive, and our fish finally made it home to the kitchen. Covered in battle scars, this fish was wild caught. You can tell this is just a lean, super fast, and powerful fish. Big eyes and a huge tongue with relatively small teeth that are embedded in the gums. Now the first step in the dry aging process is to remove the head. This is gonna allow moisture to escape and a clean tasting final product. Oh yeah, it's gliding right through. It's just like cartilage almost. By following the collar and applying a bit of force. Oh wow, okay. The head came right off. I found that it's all about slicing through cartilage rather than bone, which slices through like butter. Kind of working against the clock to try to keep it as cold as I can. Oh, this is really weird. So this is just coagulated blood. My sister's like throwing up in the corner right now. <laughs> Do you mind quickly explaining to the people what the benefits of dry aging are for fish? Everyone has the misconception that I want fish fresh. All my most famous saying is fresh is kind of boring. Fresh fish always tastes the same. Once you age it, it textures better, it's tighter, it's not mushy. I gotta say, I couldn't be more excited for the final product. Dry aged fish scales get extremely tough, so I was told to remove a center section of scales to allow me to break down the fish after the dry aging process. This is my first time doing any of this, so my technique probably wasn't perfect, but if you are enjoying this content, do me a favor and give this video a like. It's hugely helpful and allows me to continue making content like this. We have a hook and we have this bar. And just like that, it was time to go in the dry ager. 15 days later, this is what we got. So as you can see, we've had some blood releasing out of the bottom. This is a good sign, and it's gonna lead to a really clean final product. As you can see, the outside skin has gotten really tough, but I can tell the meat inside is still malleable. Here we have our beautiful dry aged tuna. The first step, we're gonna pop off this collar. Again, make sure to follow the cartilage. Perfect for roasting. You can see here how we have tons of that fatty tuna. This is the best part. We have the top loin and the bottom belly. The top is gonna be a lot more lean and it's what you're used to seeing with those beautiful red tuna steaks. The belly is far more rare and unique. Extremely fatty with ridiculous marbling that resembles Wagyu A5. It's time to separate the two with a lateral cut through the bloodline. The strip of scales that I removed was the perfect guide. I then started with a shallow cut through the skin all the way to the back. I then cut through the meat the opposite way keeping as close to the spine as possible. We're left with a beautiful deep red loin of lean dry aged tuna. And what we're left with here is actually some of the most incredibly tender meat on the entire tuna. Grab a bowl, and we're gonna start peeling this meat away. The texture of this meat from the ribs literally reminded me of slightly thawed ice cream. Gonna give this a little taste. It is remarkably tender. This is incredible. And now the moment I've been waiting for. Time to remove the belly, exposing the Wagyu of the sea. After cutting through a few rib bones, we have a full tuna belly loin. It has some bloodline that needs to be trimmed up, but you can see how the meat looks a bit fattier. And I believe in here is the Toro, which is the best of the best. Just like that, we have both our loins removed. Time to cut them open and see what we got inside. Starting with the lean. The first step is to remove as much of that bloodline as possible. Though edible, it lacks the distinct sweet bluefin tuna taste. And just take a look at that stunning cross section. Known as akami, used to make the more common red sushi and perfect tuna steaks with a rare interior. Next, we break down the belly. Once again, removing that bloodline. This first cut separates the leftover lean, trimming away the sides that were exposed to air. We're gonna square this off 
time to separate the Toro and the Chu Toro. And here I got my first look at that fatty tuna. This is Toro. Okay, so now we're gonna do our best to remove this from the skin. Oily to the touch with the most ridiculous marbling. This other side is Chu Toro, otherwise known as medium fatty tuna. A perfect combination of the lean and fatty and still highly marbled. Three distinct cuts enjoyed in different ways. And for me, a true trial by fire lesson in anatomy. But the lessons certainly weren't over as I sliced my sushi and sashimi. And I have to say, this is significantly harder than it looks. The flesh is ridiculously tender, nearly falling apart. Granted, I didn't necessarily have the right knife, but I can tell this is an extremely delicate craft doing my best to slice against the grain. Time to assemble. We have all three variations of our bluefin tuna. This is seasoned sushi rice, keeping my hands wet to help prevent sticking. In hindsight, I may have used a little bit too much rice, but hey, this is my first time making sushi, and I gotta say, I was pretty happy with these results. Slices of sashimi, which doesn't include rice, as well as nigiri, are pieces of sushi with rice. And of course, served with wasabi and pickled ginger. Okay, we finally made it. I gotta say, I am super excited to dig into this. It's crazy to think how many steps it took. I mean, started from that fresh tuna, dry aging it, breaking it down. I mean, that was a massive process in itself. Lastly, slicing it up into sashimi, definitely developed a new appreciation for sushi chefs. That was not easy. But with that said, let's go for a bite. We're gonna start with the lean. Quick wasabi timeout. I manage to do this literally every time I eat sushi. Wow, that is absolutely delicious. The first thing I notice, it's super tender, a very clean flavor. Through the dry aging process, usually with beef, you develop sort of funky notes. But this, as I mentioned, a completely clean tuna taste. And now the medium fatty, I'm gonna go for a piece of the sushi. Wow, that one was amazing. A little bit more rich than the first one. Okay, now this is the piece that I'm by far most excited about. This is fatty tuna, otherwise known as Toro. Visually, I mean, this almost looks like Wagyu. You can tell it's extremely marbled, a lot of intramuscular fat. That one is the best by far. Completely different ball game, even from the second one. It just completely coats your mouth with that richness, with that fat. All three of those were incredible and you're left with a perfectly tender and delicious result. And honestly, I was blown away. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I have way more dry aging projects coming up. I'll see you next time.